sideline sex wasn't just about the boys. Cheerleaders had been a part of sports for decades. But in the sex step 80s, they nearly made fans forget there was a game going on. Who doesn't love a pair of pom-poms? It seemed like cheerleaders were everywhere. Cheerleaders, cheerleaders, cheerleaders. Cheerleaders and sex are like peanut butter and chocolate. For some reason, they just go together. It was kind of a sneaky way to get something extremely sexual into the mainstream without everybody taking, you know, offense to it. What happened was that a TV director was watching the cheerleaders and then they went to a commercial where basically a girl in a bikini is drinking a Budweiser on all fours on a deserted island and he went, ah, wait a second, we can, why can't we put some of that in before we even go to commercial? And all the men at home said, ah. Uh... In the 80s, everybody loved the Real America's team. I want to be a cowboy. The Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders. Though they'd shaken their groove things for years, it was the decade of excess that made them international superstars. Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders in three words, sexy ass women. When you think of cheerleaders, you think of the Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders in that blue and white uniform with the stars. And those tiny little shirts, I think every guy was waiting for them to jump up and down and have one fly out. I always thought of Debbie Does Dallas. So there was just always this connection with the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders and sex. The NFL gave the boys more of what they wanted, and suddenly halftime wasn't just for bathroom breaks. The Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders became an industry onto themselves. It was finally permissible to be that sexy, so they marketed it and became this huge craze. You know, they had calendars, they were on television, on talk shows. Coffee mugs, t-shirts, posters, playing cards. I have my Dallas Cowboy cheerleader playing cards. I went to an all-boys school and those playing cards moved. Cowboy cheerleader trading cards, but they ain't trading a damn thing. I ain't trading. That's sweet. God, you can see rib cage in it, and it's all good. Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders rock. They, they, they kind of look all the same. Look. Wait, check it out. Equal opportunity. Mm, black girl. Mm, look at her. She's like, what the hell am I doing here? Shake your love. Network TV took the cheerleaders out of halftime and made them primetime. ABC not only aired a made-for-TV movie, but also a sequel. And Sis Boomba, more than 65 million people tuned in to check out the hot palm-on-palm -palm action. So I think it's just fair that you go on with the rest of the girls in Texas Stadium just to see what it feels like. Really? You know the routine. Go on. Hey, that's great. I don't think there is any other... I know there's not another cheerleading team that could say that they even had one movie made after them. It was a good time to shake it on the sidelines, and one Laker girl even traded in her pom-poms for a microphone. Paula Abdul was, you know, was a cheerleader during that time, and, and the 80s was a perfect time for someone that was a cheerleader to make that step into becoming a superstar. I've had a wonderful experience, everyone I've worked with. It's been wonderful. Can't complain. Today, cheerleaders are still doing their half-naked jiggling. But with skin everywhere, it's just not as titillating as in the 80s. I'm not sure if ever there's going to be a phenomenon like the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Now being a cheerleader means you have to get your mother to help you murder the girl who's better than you. Like, it got tainted, it went all nasty, but it'll come back again. Yeah.